This is the F90 BMW M5. Since 1985, BMW M has been dishing up fast four-door fun in a package that used to own the road, the executive sedan. For the F90 though, hardly anything has changed. M is tired of your crap. Actually, that's a total lie. M has once again made wholesale changes to again redefine the M5. M engineers seem like that politician that does dumb stunts just to get everyone's attention. Really, it's just to amuse themselves. The new M5 is obviously a BMW 5 Series, a big four-door sedan, it's sleek and elegant. M5s have never shouted about themselves, so it's hard to tell if this isn't a gussied up 520i. But look carefully. 20-inch light alloy wheels, carbon fibre roof, different grille, and a subtle rear wing. Underneath this absolutely massive lightweight aluminium bonnet is this. It's BMW's 4.4 litre twin turbo V8. Here in the F90, it has 441 kilowatts, which is a nice round 600 horsepower. Except that's not actually true. Anyone who's put this on a dyno has found out that it has more. There is also a very special oil pump to stop the engine running out of oil during track days. There's new turbos, and there is a lighter, modded exhaust that sounds so much better than the old one. Now for the first heresy. In the F90, the front wheels are driven. The rears are too, then that makes it all-wheel drive. This is obviously going to upset a lot of people. So we will shortly find out if this ruins the M5, just like everything in the past hasn't. The old M5's interior was functional, but a bit boring. The new M5 has these fantastic seats and a new digital dash. There's also a huge new screen for version 6 of iDrive and you get a heads up display. This is new too. This is the new M shifter. Now the old one had that weird kind of teardrop shape and it, it never really felt very nice. And it, oh, I didn't like it, it just looked weird. But there's another reason this is new. It's an eight speed automatic. It's going to send the fanboys crazy. Look, while we're out here alone, can I just ask if you like these videos? Hit the subscribe button, press like, leave a comment. The more you do that, the more YouTube takes notice of me and my videos, and the more people get to watch them. So let's talk about all the terrible things BMW has done to make this car terrible! Awful! Ah, it's the end of the world! Ah. all-wheel drive. Now, I was a bit meh about all-wheel drive too. You know, obviously I didn't get into, oh my goodness, it's the end of the M5, because I'm not like that. But I thought, uh, but then, you know, read a few interviews, the head of M was saying, look, you know, we're kind of, we're kind of as far as we're gonna go with two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive. You know, I, I can live with that. I respect that because, you know, there are limits to tyres and things that you can put onto a road car to make it all work. Now, the all-wheel drive is really good. It, it, I mean, it's rear biased. It's like many of the all-wheel drive systems in performance cars, and you don't feel like, well, you never feel like it's a problem. It just isn't a problem. So, scratch that. It's very capable. It's very fast. Uh, the engine in this thing is extraordinary, and that one of the reasons it's very fast, of course, is to do with this transmission. What? I'm not even in M mode then, and it just gave a little wriggle. <laughs> um, now, one of the reasons this thing is so fast is this eight-speed transmission. So it's one more gear than before, but it's also a torque converter. Now, again, this is not the end of the M5. Every time a new M5 comes out, it has a different transmission. That's fine, because I owned the VTN E60, 
that transmission was terrible unless you were absolutely thrashing it. You had to be so hard on that car for the transmission to work. And it just, it meant that what it was supposed to be, an everyday car, it made that bit difficult. Uh, and, you know, my wife didn't like that car at all. She just didn't. And then the, the last M5, which I quite liked, it never really felt settled. The transmission would ka-clunk, ka-clunk, and that was frustrating and it was unnecessary. Um, but again, once you were really on it, it was great. But it, it's, it, it had a broader capability. But you could sense that in a car this big and this heavy, rear wheel drive was, that was the end of it. It was really gonna be a big ask to make the next car significantly more capable. And that's what M5s are. Every generation is significantly better than the first. I mean, everyone craps on about the V8 E39, and I crap on about the E60 M5, but every car that has come after those, so the E60, made the E39 look ridiculous. It really did. It was so fast. This is so fast compared to the previous car, which itself was so fast. So the all-wheel drive is good, the transmission is good. You know, in normal mode, it just behaves itself. Now, of course, you've got these two buttons here on the steering wheel, M1 and M2. So they've moved out of a normal recess button and they're like little, they're almost like little paddles on the steering wheel. By the way, I still don't like the BMW gear shift paddles. I don't care what anyone says, they're just cheap. They're just cheap. So everything's good in normal mode. And you can, the great thing about the M5 is after they went a bit mad in the E6, you could choose like seven different transmission programs and all these different programs. They've, they've calmed down a bit. So here on the, on the console, you've got three buttons. One that handles the engine, one that handles the suspension, and one that handles the steering. So essentially, you've got like 27 separate modes or something crazy. So it, 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 there's that many combinations, it could even be more, uh, of, of driveline, suspension, steering combination. And that's good, because often when you're given something that the car company's decided, you don't like it. So I don't like this steering in, in Sport Plus, because it's too heavy. But you leave it in Sport, and it doesn't reduce its effectiveness or its accuracy, it's just lighter. And I'm on record as saying I quite like light steering and there's enough feel anyway to live with it. But what you can also do is disconnect those front wheels. Now, <laughs> that is brilliant. That is an absolute masterstroke. This is not a free ride for BMW's engineers. This would have cost money because you've got to make the steering and the suspension and all the whole car work in all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive. Okay, they know how to do rear-wheel drive. All-wheel drive has been a thing in the X6 and X5Ms for a little while now. This is not mucking around. This car in rear-wheel drive is an absolute hoot. It is so good, it's so much fun because it just lights up. It's almost like BMW's engineers have said, all right, if you want rear wheel drive, we're gonna give it to you unplugged. And it really is unplugged. It's, it's unhinged. It's really good. Like, a car this big should not be this easy to swing around. And it, and it swings, and it swings at the drop of a hat. Booting this out of airpins. It's such a joy. Oh boy. <laughs> and it just gets the angle and you can just play with the throttle and back it comes, it'll hold a drift. And I, I can say that because it held a drift on the earlier in the week. <laughs> it's really good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love these cars. I love all the cars I drive on the red line. I haven't had a duffer yet, but this is so much fun. And again, 
you know, I said about the M4CS it had a sense of humour and the M2's got one as well. This one really does too. The M5 has never really been particularly playful, but boy oh boy is this one playful. This is, yeah. So, this is two cars. It's your, your everyday car, all wheel drive, fantastic everyday cruiser. It's fast, so you, you know, no one's gonna give you any grief in traffic, you know, you don't have to worry about it. But you can leave it in all wheel drive, comfort, 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 and it'll just waft along really happily. You can still feel the potential, obviously. It doesn't switch it all off, but it's really comfortable and really easy to live with, and people get in it, and they'll never know it's the M5. But set up your M2 with rear wheel drive, everything turned down, and just really enjoy that analog unplugged experience. I mean, it is it will still look after you, don't worry. But, oh. <laughs> I, found, I've, I have found this car much easier to enjoy. Oh look, hopefully you can see that as an E60. Um, I have found this car much easier to enjoy than its predecessor. And that was a fun car, but this is just, it's way more fun. It's way more adjustable. And that could just be me. Maybe it's my skill level is up, my bravery is up, but I feel absolutely safe hammering this car in all wheel rear wheel drive. I and mean, in all wheel drive, it's, it's virtually untouchable. I, you know, I, I can't believe how fast this car is. And really, it's most of the transmission. I mean, the engine's, the engine's there. It's always been there. But the transmission, and I mean, the whole thing, all-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, eight-speed ZF. I mean, I've never driven the eight-speed ZF when it hasn't been absolutely brilliant. But the way it handles the torque, and it's got three shift modes from soft, medium to, okay, you want to get shot? You're going to feel like you're shot. It's, uh... Yeah. <laughs> and this thing will also do 305 kilometers an hour. It does zero to 100 as quickly as a McLaren. <laughs> it's just... I'm really enjoying M's newfound sense of insanity. I really am. <laughs> they were probably really cranky they couldn't stick with the V10. And this, yeah, this feels like the V10 in its playfulness. The previous car felt a little too tied down and also when it let go, yeah, it was, it was a bit scary. Whereas this one, there's no scariness in this. It's so good. Don't worry about the carbon brakes if you're on the road. I've been giving these an absolute shellacking today, the steels, and they've been fine. Because every M5 has been a belter, M doesn't care what you think, and nor should they. They've been punching out brilliant cars for well over 30 years. So if they're not listening to you, that's a good thing. So uh, keep it up, because I reckon this is the most complete car I've ever driven.